Hi, it's Moser with a quick tutorial on photosynthesis, the bare bones basics, and chemosynthesis, its lesser known cousin. After this video, you should be able to correctly identify the organisms that perform photosynthesis as well as those that perform chemosynthesis and describe the reactants and products as photosynthesis, of photosynthesis as well as where the process takes place. You already need to know what autotrophs are, and you should have some knowledge of basic cell structures. Hey, remember these guys are cells, prokaryotes, animal, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and in eukaryotic cells, animal cells, plant cells, all that stuff. We said that they all perform cellular respiration, and that some of them have to get carbohydrates to turn into glucose from eating other things, but some of those lucky devils are actually able to make their own carbohydrates. Those organisms are called autotrophs. Auto meaning self and troph referring to things like trophic levels, feeding and energy. Okay, so we know that autotrophs are capable on their own of taking light energy and converting it to glucose. That's the fuel that cells use to run the cellular respiration process and make ATP to fuel all their other activities. But what's the process they use to turn sunlight, just sunlight, really? Well, not exactly, into glucose. That'd be photosynthesis. What kind of organisms are capable of this magic? It's not magic. Well, autotrophs include plants, you knew that, and that means all green plants. If it's green, it's capable of photosynthesis. We'll talk about that later. Algae, that includes things like this kelp. I know it looks like a plant, but believe it or not, it isn't. And some bacteria. Not all bacteria, mind you, only some. And we'll talk about how to tell which ones can photosynthesize a little later. So you mean to tell me that in this beautiful scene with trees and flowers and grasses and vines and little algae dotting the pond, there's some sort of complex chemical reaction running. You got it, every second of every day somewhere on the planet. The process called photosynthesis is just a chemical reaction that takes carbon dioxide, water, H2O, and some light energy and transforms it into glucose, that simple sugar that cells can use to power cellular respiration, and oxygen. Now, the oxygen's just a waste product it's kind of like this thing that plants poop out all the time. Whew, lucky for us. Where does this magical process happen? Why, in the cells of autotrophs, of course. But if we want to be a little bit more specific than that, it happens in the chloroplasts. And chloroplasts look like this, sort of like a green M&M. But when you break them open, there are all sorts of other structures in there. And that's, the chemical, that's where the chemical processing occurs. Now, the one ingredient we haven't talked about is a chemical that green plants and algae and photosynthetic bacteria all possess. It's called chlorophyll. It's what makes them green. It's what makes the chloroplasts green. Okay, seems simple enough. So you're saying that as long as plants have carbon dioxide, water, and light energy, well, of course, they've got to have chloroplasts and chlorophyll, they can just keep pumping out the glucose? Yeah. And the more plants are able to photosynthesize, the more plant tissue they can build. That's because while they do use some of that glucose to power cellular respiration, some of it they store as a nutrient or convert into things like starches or proteins. Where do you think all that plant matter comes from? What does this mean for a place like Alaska, where during the peak of summer they get 20 plus hours of sunlight a day? It means they can grow some whopping big vegetables. Because the more sunlight plants and other autotrophs have, the more they photosynthesize. And the more they photosynthesize, the more glucose they make. Well, that seems simple enough. I do want to take one more quick look at this chemical equation. So CO2 plus H2O, add some light energy, get glucose and oxygen. It just seems so familiar, like I've seen parts of this before. Wait, 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 there's another one we've talked about. Hold on. Yeah, this. C6H12O6 plus oxygen equals CO2, H2O, and energy. What is that again? Oh yeah, that cellular respiration. Boy, 
Don't these things just look like two halves of a whole? Yeah, they do. All that waste CO2 that heterotrophs breathe out is sucked right up by plants. And all that waste oxygen that autotrophs breathe out, that's sucked up by heterotrophs. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I get it. Autotrophs, as long as there's sunlight and carbon dioxide and water available, will continue to make glucose. They'll store some of it, they'll build their tissues with it, and the rest of it they'll use to run their cellular respiration. Well, what about places where there is no sunshine? Ever. I don't mean like at night. I mean places like the bottom of the ocean. Caves. Realize that's an artificial light source under the boat. What about those places? Does the lack of light mean that there are no biological communities? After all, we know that autotrophs are at the bottom of all food chains. They're the only things on the planet that can take solar energy and some chemicals out of the atmosphere and make food out of it. We sure can't do that. So what does this mean for places like the bottom of the ocean? I gotta say, this sure looks like a biological community to me. So there have to be autotrophs somewhere there, but there's no light. This is the lightless zone, the midnight zone, the dark abyss. Well, funny you should ask. Sure enough, in these places at the bottom of the ocean, and this was only discovered in the 1970s, there are biological communities. And those biological communities have at their base little tiny bacteria. They're autotrophs, all right, but they're not performing photosynthesis. They're performing chemosynthesis. They're actually taking chemicals that belch out of those stacks. See that black smoke? They're called black smokers. Woo! It is some stinky gases venting from the center of the earth, hydrogen sulfide, and all kinds of stuff. These bacteria are capable of taking the chemicals in those exhaust plumes and turning it into sugars. Whoa! Once you've got bacteria that are feeding themselves, you can have a whole biological community that springs up. Pretty neat. Those are called chemoautotrophs. They're kind of a special class. Okay, do you feel like you can identify the organisms that perform photosynthesis and those that perform chemosynthesis? Can you describe the reactants and products of photosynthesis? And do you know where those processes take place? That should be it.